Welcome to the third video in the Western Officiating Development Partnership. Today we're going to talk about fitness and skating. First with fitness, we have to be at the same level of fitness as the players that we're officiating. Fitness is something that we can control and fitness is certainly something that we can work on on a daily and yearly basis. Let's talk to some of our partners. We're going to show you some examples of drills that we can do off the ice that will help with our fitness. Well, I thought my role has been since I've been with the National Hockey League with the officiating de department is that I've always maintained the areas of what is needed for someone to be able to skate well, and that is fitness. And that is that someone brings themselves with what we call the needed power, speed, agility, quickness, stamina, and also the build prototype that is able them to now maybe go to the next step and be able to be proficient and efficient as a skater because they do go somewhat hand in hand, but you can be tremendously fit, but not really a good skater. So they both have to work the same way. I got involved with the National Hockey League because I believe that if you can attain great sight lines on the ice, sooner than later, you're gonna make a better decision processing for yourself and for the game. You need to be fit to get in the proper spots to be able to see the right things, right? If you're not the same fitness level as the players or uh, your fellow officials, you're going to bring down the team or get in the way, or right? There's lots of different things that uh, can impact your game if you're not in the right shape. I want everybody to watch Tynan, watch how he drives his right side and then his left side, and his right arm or left arm never come across his body. Go Tynan. Nice. Head up. Nice. Hockey skating stride, nice strong stride, nice job. Try to straighten up, bring those toes to the gas pedal, push it now, bring it back, push it. In the summer, you take the time to really make some gains and build, and then during the season, it's a lot of maintaining what you built over the summer, over the rigors of the long season. Our second component this week is skating. The purpose of us skating is to find sight lines. And once we've found sight lines, we can use our good judgment to make good decisions in the game. In this session, we're going to talk to some of our partners. We're going to show you some drills that you can do on the ice to practice when you have some ice available for you. And we're going to show you some game situations and examples of our guys using good skating. If you can't get to the right spot on the ice, if you're a player and official, you're not going to be able to make the right play. You're not going to be able to right, make the right decision. And so what we look for in our officials is that they're able to skate at a level as good or better than the players that are on the ice. Fundamental positioning, some of the rudimentary skills that you learn early on in your career is the foundation for that. Then of course, skating ability, anticipation, agility, and overall hockey knowledge or, or your hockey IQ to anticipate things is, is crucial. Our movements propel ourselves down the ice Make sure we're driving with power, head still. Make sure we're making an opportunity to create speed with our upper body. Here we go. Nice job, nice job, nice job, nice job, nice job. Faster, faster. So underneath, cross under push. Find that dot, cross under push. Find the dot, cross under push. Find the dot, that's all I want. Cross over, keep my head up, nice job, explode. Backward C cut, nice job, cross back over, stop, C cut out, nice job, hell of a job, good work. Good work, good job, good job, good job, solid effort, nice work. C cuts, cross over, C cut right back out, nice job. It's all about being able to skate to get to the right locations, to get the good sight lines, which is ultimately what officiating is about. Skating's really an unnatural movement for our body, so it puts a lot of strain on our hips. So I do a lot of hip stability and hip mobilizations to stay loose and to be able to get out of the tight spots that we get into in the confined surface of the rink. Um, and then just staying on top of your stretching and your, your conditioning in the gym as well is very important. Here's our first example. Some great agility coming out of the zone. Recognizing now that we need to follow the play up. We use good strides and good speed to get up to the play. And this one again, just using good agility, recognizing the play, creating sight lines, and creating space. 
This shows good transition in a game as we move up the ice, follow the play. We have a turnover, we have to transition backwards. Again, we transition and go forward, our heads up, and we follow the play. Here's a great example. A referee recognizes the play comes towards him, uses his agility, creates space, creates sight lines. Again, the key for us here is we're moving. We're constantly moving, we're constantly reading the play, we're using our agility to create sight lines and to create space. Great example of all four officials working hard. The league referee works hard backwards to create sight lines, keep the players in front of them. The back referee skates hard up the ice, uses his power to create sight lines. And our linesman, our front linesman works hard backwards here, keeps the players in front of him, gets a great view of the blue line. The back linesman works hard, put himself in a position to help if needed. In closing, fitness and skating. These are two components that we can control ourselves. We can spend time working on fitness. We've given you some examples. Skating, we can work on our skating, whether it be during warm up, whether it be during the game, whether it be on ice that we get ourselves on our own. These are components that we can continue to work on that'll help us achieve the next level of fishing that we're looking to achieve.